How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here. Once again, this time we're gonna take a look at pressure, volume, temperature, and mole relationships for gases. So our objectives will be to describe and apply the relationships between pressure, volume, temperature, moles, and solve for the combined gas law problem. So kind of sneak peek at what's to come. We got P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. So let's get into it. What are ideal gas laws? So they're describing how gases behave under ideal conditions. So what is a perfect gas? So we're gonna take a look at what does a perfect gas do when we're looking at just pressure and volume changes, as well as volume and temperature changes, as well as pressure and temperature changes, and volume versus moles of gas. So what happens when we change one? What happens to the other one? So Boyle's Law, you can see here, I have a nice little GIF, yeah, I said GIF, uh, of a Cartesian diver. So you can see there is a uh, eyedropper that is partially filled with water and partially filled with gas. So if you look closely, you can see the gas right there. And as my hand squeezes the bottle and pressure goes up, what happens to the volume of the gas inside of that? Well, the volume goes down. So this is Boyle's law, right? If you're talking about specific gas laws, pressure versus volume is Boyle's law. So as um, pressure goes up, volume goes down, and you see a little curve usually like this uh, to graphically represent that. As pressure goes up, volume goes down. So put it into words. Boyle's law states that the pressure of a given mass of an ideal gas is inversely proportional to its volume at a constant temperature. Uh, in other words, if you keep the temperature the same, as you increase pressure, the volume of the gas will go down. So pressure versus volume, as you increase pressure, volume is going to go down. All right, Boyle's law continued. Mathematically, it's saying that the pressure is proportionate to one over the volume, which means, hey, if I move the, the pressure and the volume to the same side, I'm gonna get pressure times volume has to equal some constant, right? So that's mathematically Boyle's law. P, pressure, times V, volume, is equal to some constant. So that means if I start with a certain pressure and a certain volume and I keep everything else the same, well, if I change the pressure, then the volume's gonna change. So P1, V1 has to equal P2, V2, uh, and so the one represents the initial. So it's saying whatever the initial pressure and volume are, when you multiply them together, they have to equal the new pressure times volume. All right, Charles Law. I'm taking a look at volume versus temperature. So here you can see I got a, a balloon that's filled with a certain amount of gas, and I have a beaker of really hot water that's heating up the gas. And what happens to the volume of the balloon as you put it into the hot beaker? Well, if you look, you can see the balloon expands, and then it expands so much that it starts to come up out of the beaker. And you can see briefly when you take the balloon out and place it down here, it starts to shrink back down when it's cooling off. So as, volume, as temperature increases, so is the volume of an ideal gas. So we got temperature, we got volume. You increase one, you increase the other. All right, so Charles Law in words is say, saying that, um, that the volume of an ideal gas at constant pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. As you increase temperature, volume goes up. In other words, first off, absolute temperature is telling us that the temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Uh, if you keep pressure the same, if you increase the temperature, the volume of the gas will also increase. If you double the temperature, the volume will also double. And that's kind of why we need the temperature to be in Kelvin. Because if you're like, hey, you know, what's double the temperature of zero degrees Celsius? Like, how are you gonna do that? Double the zero is zero. You can't use Celsius. Definitely can't use Fahrenheit. Get that nonsense out of here. You have to use Kelvin. All right, so mathematically. We know that volume is proportionate to temperature. So again, if I want to get them on the same side of this kind of proportionate thing, I would divide each side by temperature. So I know that volume divided by temperature has to equal some constant. Because that's true, if I have my initial volume divided by my initial temperature, that equals some constant. If I change my temperature and I get a new temperature, well, my new volume is going to have to change as well. But the, the V divided by T has to still equal that constant. So again, uh, the one represents the initial values for volume and temperature, and the two 
represents the new values for volume and temperature. Guy Lussac's law. We're comparing pressure and temperature. So here's a little uh, demo. You can see it'll replay. Um, there's a can that is on a hot plate so that the air inside of that can getting really hot. It's open on the top. So the pressure uh, is whatever the atmospheric pressure is. But then when I turn it upside down, I seal off the top and the gas in that can cools significantly. So the temperature is going down and you can see the can gets crushed because the pressure inside of the can is also going down. Now the pressure outside of the can stays constant and it becomes greater than the pressure inside of the can and it crushes it. So if I'm looking at temperature versus pressure, uh, if I increase the temperature, the pressure goes up. If I decrease the temperature, the pressure goes down. Right, so uh, let me, temperature, pressure, there you go. So in words, Guy Lussac's law, the pressure of a given mass of a gas varies directly with the absolute temperature of the gas when the volume is kept constant. So in other words, if the volume is kept constant, as you increase the temperature of a gas, its pressure will also go up. And again, the temperature needs to be in Kelvin. That's what we mean when we say absolute temperature. So mathematically, we know that pressure is proportionate to temperature. So if I put them on the same side, I get pressure divided by temperature has to equal some constant which means if I change my conditions of pressure and temperature uh, and keep everything else the same, the new pressure, new temperature still have to be in the same ratio. Pressure divided by temperature still needs to be constant, right? So again, the ones represent the initial pressure and temperature and the two subscript is saying whatever the new values are. So Avogadro's law. You know, it's just saying that equal volumes of gas at the same temperature and pressure contain the equal number number of moles. So we got moles versus the volume. If the volume of a gas at a constant temperature and pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas. So basically, it, it, you know, simple layman's terms, if you have more moles of gas, it's going to take up more volume. If you double the moles of gas, you double the volume. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the gas is. If you have one mole of hydrogen gas versus one mole of helium gas, it's gonna take up the same volume at the same pressure and temperature. If you double the number of moles of gas, you double the volume. So mathematically, again, you know, volume is proportionate to the number of moles of gas. Get them on the same side, so volume divided by N, number of moles, has to equal some constant, which means if we change one, uh, right, so we got V1 divided by N1 has to equal a constant. So if I change one of them, then the other also has to change. This proportion needs to be constant. So yeah, V1, N1, initial volume and moles of gas, and V2, N2 is whatever the new values are. All right, vocab term, molar volume at STP. All that means, molar volume is the volume that one mole takes up, right? Molar volume, the volume of one mole. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature, zero degrees Celsius, standard pressure is one atmosphere. Uh, and for any gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, one mole occupies 22.4 liters of volume. So that's just a handy thing to kind of remember. You could do the math and figure it out every time. But it's probably just the easier to go, hey, one mole, 22.4 liters at STP. All right, so when our laws combine, we got Boyle's law, P times V equals some constant. We got Charles' law, V divided by T equals some constant. We got Guy Lussac's law, um, pressure divided by temperature equals some constant. We got Avogadro's law, volume divided by number of moles has to equal some constant. Now, if we start combining them, we go, all right, I know P times V equals some constant. Uh, v divided by T, so temperature has to go on the bottom. Uh, P on top, T on bottom, volume on top, number of moles on bottom. That has to equal some constant we're going to call R. That is the gas constant. So when we combine them, we get pressure times volume divided by moles of gas times temperature. Has to equal some constant R. All right, so we got PV over NT equals some constant. Therefore, uh, if we change any one of these values, either pressure, volume, moles of gas, or temperature, 
uh, the new values still have to have the same ratio. They have to equal this constant, right? So P1, V1 over N1, T1 has to equal P2, V2 over N2, T2. And what's nice is from this one equation, you can get all of the gas laws that we were just talking about. Uh, anything that's constant cancels out. I'll show you what, you know, if, if N1 equals N2, well then, hey, you can just cross them out because they're the same value on either side of the equal sign. So let's, let's see what I'm talking about. What happens to the equation when moles are constant? Most of the time, most of the sample problems like this, the moles is constant. You're talking about a certain amount of gas, and then you change the rest of the conditions. What are the new conditions? So if we you know, keep N1 equal to N2, it drops out, and we end up with uh, P1 V1 over T1 has to equal P2 V2 over T2, right? Uh, yeah. What if temperature is also held constant? Well, temperature then drops out as well because T1 equals T2. Right, and we end up with P1 V1 equals P2 V2, and hey, that's one of the other gas laws. All right, what if uh, we had constant moles and constant volume? All right, well then N1 equals N2, and V1 equals V2, so they drop out, and we end up with P1 over T1 has to equal P2 over T2, and hey, that looks familiar as well. What about constant moles and constant pressure? All right, well N1 equals N2, so they drop out, and P1 equals P2, so that drops out, and we're left with V1 over T1 has to equal V2 over T2. Hey, that looks familiar too. Wouldn't you know it? So combine gas law problems. Recommended approach for solving this stuff, cancel out whatever's kept constant. Start there. Next, determine what variable is being solved for. What are they asking you to solve for? Then rearrange what you got, that combined gas law equation, so that you're solving for the one thing that's being asked. Then just plug and chug, plug in the numbers into the equation, round your answer to correct sig figs, and there you go, you've solved the problem. So why do it this way? If you start plugging in numbers before you rearrange things, you're more likely to make a mistake. Uh, moving around a bunch of ugly numbers is a lot harder than just moving around a single variable. So I would definitely recommend rearranging the equation before you start dealing with any numbers. All right, so here's a semi-real life scenario. A ship at sea gets into some serious trouble during a storm and capsizes. Fortunately, they are able to radio for help and the Coast Guard is on their way, but they had become trapped in the upside-down ship that began to sink. The entire crew was in the same room together and, and an air pocket was trapped in the room. At the time of capsizing, the volume of the air pocket was 100 liters and the pressure was one atmosphere. As the ship sinks, however, the pressure builds at a rate of one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth. The boat sank to the bottom, which was a mere 30 meters deep. The pressure of the air pocket is now four atmospheres, one being from the air and three being from the water. How big is this life-saving air pocket now, assuming temperature is the same? All right, so we know that temperature is the same, so T1 equals T2. And we know, hey, the amount of gas in there, the, the moles of it hasn't changed, so N1 equals N2. So now we have our equation. More likely, uh, you'll see a problem that's kind of put like this. What is the volume of gas that occupies 100 liters at one atmosphere when the pressure is increased to four atmospheres? The same scenario, just boiled down to what the math is, right? So again, I go, what are they asking me? Uh, what, you know, let's see. When the pressure, what is, what is the volume? There we go, what is the volume? So I'm looking for the new volume. So I'm gonna rearrange, I go V2 equals P1 times V1 divided by P2. So now I can start plugging and chugging. I go, all right, well, 100 liters at one atmosphere are my initial conditions. So my P1 is one atmosphere, my V1 is 100 liters, and my P2 is four atmospheres. My atmospheres cancel out, and when I plug and chug, I end up with 25 liters. So there you go. All right, another example. You buy your little sibling a helium balloon for their surprise birthday party. It has a volume of 2.5 liters at room temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius. Their birthday is in January, and as you leave the store, it's a particularly frigid day at chilling minus 10 Celsius. You drive back to your house where everyone is waiting, and you left the balloon in the car. The big surprise comes, and your sibling is delighted. You run out to the car to get their balloon, and much to your dismay, the balloon looks deflated 
How embarrassing. What is the new volume of your balloon? Well, let's think about it. The pressure, they don't mention the pressure, but it's, you know, it doesn't change. So P1 equals P2. Uh, let's see, the volume definitely changes. The number of moles of gas doesn't change, so that drops out. Uh, so we're left with, you know, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So let's, you know, put another way. If a certain amount of gas occupies 2.5 liters at 25 Celsius, what volume will it occupy if it's cooled down to 10, negative 10 degrees Celsius? Uh, so again, we end up with uh, this equation after all the constants drop out, and they're asking us for the new volume. So when I rearrange to solve for V2, I get V1 times T2 divided by T1. So I look, all right, my initial volume is 2.5 liters. This degree Celsius has to be converted to Kelvin, which is 298 Kelvin. Uh, same with this temperature, convert it, it's gonna be 263 Kelvin. Uh, the 298 is my T1, my 263 is my T2. So let's see, times 263 for my T2, divided by 298 Kelvin. When I do the math, the units for Kelvin cancel out and let me get my handy dandy calculator, beep up, beep up, boop. 2.2 liters is my new volume. Uh, is the birthday ruined? No, they might not even notice. You know, they didn't see what the balloon was like before. And plus, when uh, you bring the balloon inside, it's gonna warm back up and it's gonna reinflate. It's gonna be beautiful. They're gonna be so happy. You're such a good sibling, All right? All right, another example. The official rules of the NFL require footballs to be inflated between 12.5 and 13.5 PSI. Kind of shockingly, each team is in charge of inflating the footballs that they will be throwing. If you fill the football at 25 degrees Celsius at 12.5 PSI while indoors, and then took that football outside to play where the temperature is negative 10 Celsius, what would the new pressure be? All right, well, we know pressure is gonna change. The moles of gas stay constant, so they drop out. And the volume of the football isn't gonna change, just the pressure and the temperature. So I end up with P1 over T1 has to equal P2 over V2. Which, hey, that's Gay-Lussac's law. All right, so more likely, you'll come across a problem that says something like this. A rigid cylinder, in this case a football, of gas is pressurized at 12.5 PSI at 25 Celsius. What would the pressure of the cylinder be if it was cooled to negative 10 Celsius? So I'm trying to figure out my new pressure. So if I rearrange, I end up with P1 times T2 over T1 equals my new pressure. So now let's see, 12.5 PSI is my P1, 25 Celsius is my T1, and 10, negative 10 Celsius is my T2. Remember these temperatures need to be converted to Kelvin. So I'm gonna I'm cheat and do that real quick. All right, my initial pressure, 12.5 PSI times my new temperature, 263 Kelvin, divided by my initial temperature of 298 Kelvin. And when I do that and I plug and chug, beep pop, beep pop, boop, I end up with roughly 11 pounds per square inch. So definitely not within the range of what they're supposed to be after you brought them outside. So summarize, describe what the ideal gas law are, how do pressure, volume, and temperature are related to each other in terms of gas behavior, explain how they come together to give the combined gas law, and uh, use the combined gas law to solve typical gas law problems. All right, I uh, hope you found it helpful. See you in class, okay, bye.